Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. What's really important for growers to understand with Thousand Kernel Weights is it's going to give them the best opportunity to maximize the amount of seed and the, ac the most accurate number of seeds that they're going to be able to plant on their acres. And that's really what this photo is going to be showing us here that's behind me. This is actually taken from a trial we did last year where we were planting SY985 in a trial situation similar to what you're seeing here, but with two different seed lots. One seed lot, I think as you can maybe able to see, was a little bit smaller than the other. Both had excellent germ, very low mortality, very good high quality seed, but the weights were off a little bit. We used 1000 kernel weight, we calculated the correct seeding rates that we were trying to target for the right and correct target populations in our, in our trials, pardon me, and um, for any of our crops. If we'd have just went with a standard two bushel or three bushel weight like some growers do uh, use, we'd have actually been 36% out on what we'd have been doing. We'd have had 36% fewer seeds actually going into the ground with the plumper kernels, and that way our plant stand would have been much less. We would have been looking at uh, scenarios where we may have had more weeds growing in and a much thinner plant stand as well. At Syngenta, I think we're con uh, continually going back to the drawing board and we really want to see what growers have been doing in the past, uh, where there can be an improvement and some of the things that they really should maybe be taking a look at as they go forward into the future. So what we see here is actually the same seeding rate trial that we're doing this year. It was done last year, five different locations across the west. What you're seeing graphed here actually, what's highlighted by the orange circle would be the peak yield. So that was the maximum yield that each of these locations had before the yield began to fall off as the seeding rate or the plant population increased. So what we wanted to see, what you want to be seeding and what you should be targeting as far as your plant population is where the graph is the highest. That's really where you're going to be seeing the maximum benefit for those seeding rates and for those plant populations. And just draw your attention to here for, just to draw your attention to a good example of this, this would be the Vegreville site. You can see 35 plants per square foot. After that, the yield drastically dropped off and we were losing somewhere in the neighborhood of a brown 10 bushels per acre. At this site, in fact, we're at the same location we were last year. It's the only location that's under irrigation with a very high fertility package. So you can see we were able to realize some very high yields. And in the trial last year, we maximized, or we topped out at 40 plants per square foot. And you can see the graph is still continuing in that upward direction. So we actually weren't able to break it and find that maximum potential before the yield began to dip. And that's where we're coming into this year. This year, we've actually dropped off the 20 plants. We've added 45 plants per square foot in the hopes that we're gonna be able to see that maximum yield and maybe see if we're gonna see that graph drop off and break. Seeding rates make a big difference for growers in their fields today. Uh, again, with modern varieties, modern genetics, and especially in modern planting techniques, I think growers really need to take a step back and look at are they optimizing the full potential of their land, especially and especially their full potential of the fertility and the fertilizer that they're putting in at, let's be honest, fairly great expense. So here we have 45 plants per square foot. I think uh, most would agree very high seeding rate and very high plant densities, even though this site is under irrigation. Uh, talking to a lot of growers that do traditionally grow weed under irrigation, they tend to like to target somewhere in that neighborhood of 30 to 35 plants. Here we've added an extra 10 plants and got us all the way up to 45. I think you can really see one of the real nice benefits of going with these high seeding rates. That canopy is going to close up nice and tight on you relatively early. That's going to minimize the second and third flushes that you could get, uh, especially in a year like we've had, like this one, multiple rain events, very cool conditions, really gets a lot of weeds germinating and growing at other times. Another benefit that you're going to see with a higher seeding rate and higher plant density is much more even maturation, and that's going to play a key role for all those growers that are straight cutting out there. You want a nice even maturation, not a lot of green in there, get that crop off in a timely manner and with very good uh, seed quality. Another big benefit to these higher seeding rates is gonna be in those areas that are affected by fusarium head blight. Uh, as we know, head blight will tend to get into those tillers that do tend to be you know, a day or two behind the main stem and that first or second tiller. You do have a very tight window of application when it comes to applying your head blight products and these smaller tillers being down and lower in that canopy likely not going to get hit by any product should you spray and will likely be not in the right the correct timing for that application and there will be a tendency for disease to develop. Mm -hmm.